and gentlemen, the arrival of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the United Arab Emirates. Assayyidat wasada. Esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The opening ceremony will commence shortly. Esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The opening ceremony will commence shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, the arrival of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the United Arab Emirates. Assayyidat wasada. Wasulu sahib al sumu, a Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Raisu Dawla, Hafidahullah. Says, 
Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Please stand for the National Anthem of the United Arab Emirates. Sayyidati wa sadati, yurja al-wukuf lil-nashid al-watani li-dawlat al-imarat al-arabiyyat al-muttahida. Where does your path lead? Can you reimagine the future? Harness human ingenuity? Address our greatest challenges? And make sure no one is left behind? Can your path lead us to net zero? To arrive at the same destination and create a sustainable world? capacity to adapt. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. It is now or never. There is no planet B. The science has made it plainly clear. The time for brinksmanship is over. Humanity faces stark but clear choices. If working apart we are forced powerful enough to destabilize our planet, surely working together we are powerful enough to save it. That's why we're here. That is what we're working toward. It is going to be hard. The thing we have going for us is that humanity has done hard things before. Together, we must drive a green innovation revolution. It is doable. We have the basis for hope. We can protect our precious planet. We have the collective capacity to rise to the challenge of this moment. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week 2023. Since 2008, Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week has grown to become a recognized convener of world leaders and a platform to accelerate sustainable development. And now, please join us in welcoming His Excellency, Dr. Sultan Ahmed Al Jabr, UAE Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology, Special Envoy for Climate Change, and Chairman of Maslar to deliver the opening address. Assalamu alaikum. Your Highness, 
Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, <coughs> President of the United Arab Emirates, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the United Arab Emirates, to Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, and to the Zayed Sustainability Prize Awards Ceremony. This year's ADSW carries a special significance because it is the year that we host COP28 in a critical decade for climate progress. The United Arab Emirates approaches this role with humility, a deep sense of responsibility, and a great sense of urgency. We have a full and clear understanding of what is at stake. We share the risks of rising temperatures alongside all countries. And alongside all countries, we share the ambition to make transformational, game-changing progress and to get ahead of the future. The UAE has always risen to challenges by getting ahead of the future. And the transformational progress we have managed to achieve in only 50 years has been anchored by the principle and true practice of genuine partnership. We have been blessed with a leadership that have invested the wealth of the nation in the health of the nation. Balanced economic growth with environmental responsibility and put climate action at the heart of our development strategy. Before anyone in this region saw future renewables, the UAE saw them as the future. When people questioned our ability to deliver on the promise of Mazdar, we focused and stayed the course. Before others decarbonized, we embedded sustainability in all our hydrocarbon operations. And we will continue to invest in the clean energies of tomorrow as we drive down the carbon footprint of the energy the world needs today. For us, sustainable development is about never settling for the now. It is always about the next, about building on previous breakthroughs building new innovative partnerships, staying one step ahead, never hitting the pause button. Because next never stops. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, despite the progress that the world is making, we need to be honest with ourselves. We are way off track. We need to go much further and much faster. We are playing catch up in our efforts to keep 1.5 alive. We need to reverse emissions while moving economies forward, enabling an inclusive and just transition that leaves no one behind. That's why we are determined to make COP28 a COP for all and a COP of action. A COP, <clears throat> a COP where the global north and global south really communicate and listen to each other. A COP where we move from goals to getting it done across mitigation, adaptation, and of course, loss and damage. And a COP where we deliver a new transformative deal on climate finance. The task ahead is massive, but so is the opportunity. The road to net zero represents the biggest market transformation with the greatest economic promise 
since the first industrial revolution. A low carbon pathway to a high growth destination with inclusive growth for all. Ladies and gentlemen, driving inclusive progress is what the Zayed Sustainability Prize is all about. The prize has been empowering positive change makers for more than 15 years. Their initiatives are changing lives from Asia to Africa, from the Caribbean to the Pacific. So let us take inspiration and hope from their stories and their impact. Distinguished guests, the pursuit of progress is what drives humanity forward. It is what makes us be very optimistic, makes us think about how far we can go. And as we prepare to host COP28 in November, I ask myself, can the world come together to meet the urgency of this moment? Can the world cut emissions in half in next seven years? And my answer is yes. I believe in the power. I repeat, my answer is yes, simply because I believe in the power of human progress. I believe in the power of our leadership's vision for progress through partnership. I believe that together we can turn the greatest challenge we face into the opportunity of our lifetimes. So let me extend an open invitation. Cooperate, collaborate, share your ideas, and let's put the principle of partnership into real practice. Let's make practical and real progress because next never stops. Now is the time to unite, and now is the time to act. This is the time to turn rhetoric into tangible results. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Please join me now in welcoming the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, His Excellency Ilham Aliyev, to the stage. Your Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the President of UAE, Heads of State and Government, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to express gratitude to the President of UAE for inviting me to attend this important gathering. It's a big honor for me to speak in front of this audience. Yesterday, we had an excellent meeting with Mr. President and once again confirmed the strategic importance of relationship between UAE and Azerbaijan in many areas. Using this opportunity, I'd like to express gratitude to all our hosts. I want to congratulate the President and the people of UAE with tremendous achievements in rapid development. Under your leadership, Mr. President, UAE transformed into the world's one of the most stable, developed, and successful countries. And we, your brothers in Azerbaijan, are really proud of what you are doing. We in Azerbaijan develop renewable sources of energy not in order to provide our energy security. We did it many years ago. Today, Azerbaijan not only satisfies its own needs with energy, but also is exporting crude oil, oil products, natural gas, petrochemicals, electricity. Uh, our program with respect to renewables has a completely different agenda. First, because it's an enormous potential. Second, because it will help us to diversify our export. And of course, it will create a new 
ecologically friendly sector of our economy. Azerbaijan just two years ago completed, together with its partners, the mega energy project, Southern Gas Corridor, an integrated pipeline system which uh, stretches from Azerbaijan to Southern Europe and has a length of 3,500 kilometers. Our export of natural gas is growing from 19 billion cubic meters last year to 24 billion cubic meters this year, and it will continue to grow. Therefore, once again, I'd like to say that our vision for uh, Azerbaijan to be one of the centers of renewable energy source is not energy security for Azerbaijan. But we do it for different reasons which I already announced. With respect to our potential, just a couple of figures for your attention. 27 gigawatt of wind and solar onshore, 10 gigawatt of wind and solar energy in the territories which have been liberated during the Patriotic War of 2020, and 157 gigawatt of uh, wind energy in the Azerbaijani sector of the Caspian Sea. So almost 200 gigawatt of potential. And of course, we need to have enough export routes, and of course, to implement all these projects in stages. Yesterday, Mazdar and Azerbaijan's national energy company, Sokar, signed an agreement to develop the four gigawatt wind and solar power plants in Azerbaijan, and this is only a short-term project. Mid-term projects will increase the volume up to 10 gigawatt, and this is absolutely doable. We have a roadmap for that, and uh, this project, only this project, our cooperation with Mazdar, will transform Azerbaijan into a very important source of uh, green energy exports. In total, uh, MOUs and agreements signed uh, by Azerbaijan with, interna with international energy companies will allow us to produce up to 22 gigawatt of wind and solar energy. And of course, for that purpose, we need export routes, as I already mentioned. And just uh, last month, 17th of December, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Hungary, and Romania signed an agreement to build a Black Sea seabed electric cable from Black Sea coast of Georgia to the Black Sea coast of Romania. And this agreement was witnessed by the President of the uh, European Commission. So our plan is to build a cable which will allow to transport green energy from Azerbaijan at the level of four gigawatt. But that will not be enough. This is only what has been already agreed. Our plans are much broader, and um, investment climate in Azerbaijan is very positive. And we accumulated a lot of investments in oil and gas sector, but now our target is renewable. So in other words, we have great plans, and I'm sure that we will succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome His Excellency Yoon suk Yeol, President of the Republic of Korea, to deliver our final keynote address for this morning. Chunyonganan, 
인류의 지속가능한 미래를 위해 국제사회의 지혜를 모으는 장으로 자리매김했습니다. 포스트 오일 시대를 준비하고 탄소 중립을 향해 나아가고 있는 UAE의 담대한 행보에 전 세계가 주목하고 있습니다. 2021년 중동 지역에서 최초로 탄소 중립을 선언했고 아부다비는 세계 최초의 탄소 제로 도시 마스다르를 건설해 오고 있습니다. 탈탄소 스타트업의 성지로 이곳 아부다비가 부상하고 있는 것은 더 이상 놀라운 일이 아닙니다. 한국 역시 2050 탄소중립을 선언했습니다. 이를 실현하기 위해 무탄소 전원인 원전 생태계를 빠르게 복원하고 재생에너지 수소 등 청정에너지의 공급을 확대해 나아가고 있습니다. 기업들이 기술 혁신을 통해 탄소중립 관련 신산업 분야를 개척할 수 있도록 적극 지원하고 도시는 저에너지와 모빌리티 기술을 융합한 스마트 시트로의 탈바꿈을 추진하고 있습니다. 특히 올해는 부문별 또 연도별 온실가스 감축 경로를 반영한 국가 탄소중립 녹색성장 기본계획을 수립해서 국제사회와의 탄소중립 약속을 더욱 체계적으로 지켜나갈 계획입니다. 한국과 UAE의 특별 전략적 동반자 관계가 탄소 중립 분야까지 확대되면 국제사회에서 양국의 리더십이 더욱 커지고 경제 협력 기회 역시 증대될 것입니다. 양국 우정의 상징인 원전 협력에 재생에너지 수소 탄소저장 포집 활용 등 청정에너지 협력까지 더해지면 양국의 에너지 안보 강화는 물론 글로벌 에너지 시장의 안정성 제고에도 기여할 것입니다. 스마트 시티 건설도 양국의 협력으로 시너지를 높일 수 있습니다. 한국의 세계적인 IT 기술, 인프라 기술과 UAE의 마스다르 건설 운영 경험이 함께 모아지면 양국의 손으로 세계 곳곳에 지속가능한 도시의 미래를 구현할 수 있을 것입니다. 존경하는 내외 귀빈 여러분 올해 아부다비 지속가능성 주관은 작년 제27차 유엔기후변화협약 당사국 총회와 올해 UAE에서 개최될 제28차 당사국 총회의 가교로서 그 역할과 의미가 중요합니다. 올해 총회에서는 파리협정 이행 여부의 진전, 진전이 어느 정도 되었는지 최초로 평가하는 전 지부적 이행 점검이 이루어집니다. 기후 위기에 따른 개도국의 손실과 피해 지원 기금 조성 방안을 구체화하는 회의이기도 합니다. 한국은 국제사회의 책임 있는 일원이자 UAE의 오랜 친구로서 제28차 당사국 총회의 성공적 개최를 위해 모든 지원을 아끼지 않을 것입니다. 한국은 올해 8회, 올해 8월 인천에서 개최하는 UN 기후변화 협약 적응 주관을 통해서 국제사회의 기후변화 적응에 대한 논의를 진전시켜 나가겠습니다. 또한 그린 ODA를 확대하여 선진국과 개도국 간 기후변화 대응 역량의 격차를 줄이는데 실질적으로 기여하겠습니다. 탄소중립은 한 국가의 노력만으로는 달성하기 어려운 세계의 공통 언어가 됐습니다. 우리가 함께 한다면 탄소중립에 기반한 지속가능한 미래에 한층 더 가까워질 것이고 한국과 UAE가 함께 탄소중립을 위한 연대와 협력의 길로 나아간다면 
인류의 지속 가능성은 확실해질 것입니다 여러분 이 자리에 모두 함께하게 돼서 정말 기쁘고 매우 감사합니다 네. due to wildfires that were uncontrollable. Tasmania's ecosystem, the natural environment, is incredibly fragile. La mayor cantidad de mujeres mexicanas donde hay cáncer no tienen recursos económicos. Que muchas mujeres mueren con esa enfermedad porque se va al doctor, pero ya demasiado tarde. De Zafa, But when Zaid come, we start to make new life. In memory for the Sheikh Zaid, we built Zaid Solar Academy to train the women for solar installation. Hacerte un mamotez, una mastografía, te salva la vida. Está llegando a esa sociedad vulnerable. The Zaid Sustainability Prize project launched me and our school on a journey all the way to developing a really important asset in our community now, the Zaid Energy Hub. Toby and the award opened people's eyes. I'm so incredibly grateful to the legacy of Sheikh Zayed for trusting me to be an innovator, and inspiring me to tackle these global issues. Without that journey, I would not have been elected the Deputy Mayor of the Huon Valley. La labor que hace Dios le va a multiplicar. Entonces, que haya mucha gente así. From being only women in the village, they are also now solar technicians. In our community, we used to say women are inferior, but now it is a change. Gracias a Sayé, de verdad. Porque gracias a a ese premio, Mamotes llegó a, a mi México. We named my granddaughter Mary Zaid Halawa. She's very bright. I'm so thankful to the legacy of Sheikh Zayed and incredibly proud to say that we're part of the ripple effect of one innovative leader. وهذا نحن ساعين في طريقنا ولن نتوقف ابدا عن مسعى الخير ومسعى 
ومسع الغرس والحصاد هذا البشر في هذا الوطن لا يمكن أن نتوقف أبدا Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the United Arab Emirates, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to the 2023 Zayed Sustainability Prize Awards Ceremony. For 15 years, the Zayed Sustainability Prize has recognized entities that are positively impacting communities and improving livelihoods across the globe. Through its 96 winners, the Zayed Sustainability Prize has transformed the lives of over 370 million, 78 million people across the world. We begin today with our first category, health. The three finalists in this category are Associação Expedicionares da Saúde from Brazil for providing essential health care to the Amazon's indigenous communities, benefiting over 35,000 people. Helmholtz Center for Infection Research from Germany for enabling fast detection and response to outbreaks for 40 diseases across 10 countries. Ori Laboratory from Japan for designing avatar robots to help 100,000 people with disabilities connect to society. And the winner is... Associação Expedicionarios da Saúde Brasil. Congratulations to Associação Expedicionarios da Saúde. Our next category of the morning is food. The three finalists in this category are Nuru International from the United States for supporting farmers in increasing crop yields and income, benefiting 250,000 people in Africa. Regen Organics from Kenya for manufacturing organic fertilizer and livestock feed using insect protein and waste to support 5,300 farmers. Insect from France for formulating premium insect protein for plants, animals, and people benefiting 30 million people. And the winner is... Insect from France, congratulations. Congratulations to Insect. On to our next category, Energy. The finalists are Green Girls Organization from Cameroon for deploying decentralized renewable energy solutions and training women eco-entrepreneurs, benefiting over 8,000 rural households. Neurotech from Jordan for deploying an energy optimization solution designed for refugee camps, serving over 10,000 refugees in Jordan. Solar Kiosk Solutions from Germany for providing rural off-grid communities with electricity benefiting 5 million people. And the winner is... Neurotech! Congratulations, Neurotech! Congratulations, Neurotech! Next up is the water category. The three finalists in this category are Helios from Austria for creating a solar-powered device that informs people when water is safe to drink, benefiting 104,000 people. Leaders from Bangladesh for providing water resource management solutions, benefiting 1 million people in disaster-prone parts of Bangladesh. Sesui Industries from Japan for providing portable wastewater treatment plants, benefiting over 1 million people. And the winner is... Leaders, congratulations!
Congratulations to leaders. Our final category this morning is Global High Schools, recognizing schools in six geographic regions. The finalists from the Americas are from Colombia, Centro Etnoeducativo Integral Rural Nuestra Señora del Carmen wants to install a solar-powered reverse osmosis water purification system to serve over 1,000 students. Also from Colombia, Fundación Bios de Hay Icam Ubate proposed the creation of a program to monitor air quality for 200,000 people in Ubate. From Argentina, Escuela Tecnica Número 3 Maria Sanchez de Thompson wants to produce portable water testing kits to benefit 925,000 families. And the winner is... Fundación Bios Terre Icam Ubate. Congratulations, Fundación Bios Terre Icam Ubate. The finalists from Sub-Saharan Africa are from Nigeria, Cheshire High School wants to improve fruit farming through solar power technologies to benefit over 10,000 students. From Kenya, Marymount Secondary School plans to produce biogas for the school kitchen to benefit 3,000 students. From Tanzania, UWC East Africa Arusha Campus aims to develop biochar filters to remove fluoride in drinking water for 10,000 households. And the winner is UWC East Africa Arusha Campus. Congratulations, UWC East Africa Arusha Campus. The finalists from the Middle East and North Africa are from Iraq. Gifted Students School wants to develop a solar-powered hydroponic greenhouse to benefit over 200 students. From the UAE, JSS Private School plans to cultivate microalgae to treat wastewater. This project is expected to benefit over 1,900 students. From Egypt, Obur STEM School proposes to use renewable energy to power two labs which will benefit 850 students. And the winner is... Gifted Student School. Congratulations, Gifted Student School. The finalists from Europe and Central Asia are from Serbia, S. Kreatnil Pero aims to develop sustainable products using a solar-powered 3D printer to benefit 5,000 students. From United Kingdom, North Fleet Technology College plans to study biodiversity in a remote classroom powered by renewable energy, benefiting 750 students. From Germany, Romain Roland Gymnasium wants to build a solar-powered hydrogen fuel cell to benefit 950 students. And the winner is... Romain Roland Gymnasium! Congratulations, Romain Roland Gymnasium! The finalists from South Asia are from Bangladesh, Dhaka Residential Model College wants to supply microorganism-based seeds and fertilizers to over 2,000 farms in Bangladesh. Also from Bangladesh, Obizatric School aims to set up solar-powered rainwater harvesting and purifying systems to benefit 4,500 students. From Nepal, Kopila Valley School plans to develop composting kits which are expected to benefit 420 families. And the winner is... Dhaka Residential Model College. Congratulations, Dhaka Residential Model College. 
And for our last Global High Schools region, which is East Asia and Pacific, the finalists are from the Philippines, Bohol Wisdom School wants to power its wildlife monitoring robot and upcycle plastic waste using solar energy to benefit 10,000 students. From Fiji, Camille Muslim College aims to implement a solar plant to power the school, a rainwater harvesting system, a biodigester, and a hydroponics farm to provide 6,150 student lunches per year. Also from Fiji, Sangam Sadhu Kupuswami Memorial College plans to install solar panels and a rainwater harvesting system and convert a vacant school building into a health clinic to benefit over 5,500 students. And our final winner for this morning, Camille Muslim College. Congratulations to Camille Muslim College for the victory. How will you feel if you win the prize? Oh, very happy. Yeah? Very happy. It is unbelievable. A dream come true. Our community will be overjoyed. Our team is so happy. We are actually able to see a future in our project. I must be happy. We are one step further towards a more sustainable world. The Zayat Sustainability Prize gives this visibility towards growing you know, our impact positively to the planet. The prize has inspired young minds to believe that any action, small or big, can make a difference. Leaders is providing a lot of water solution because the water crisis is severe in coastal Bangladesh. We are farming insects and we process them into premium ingredients to feed all the food chain. يضمن جهازنا المبتكر للطاقة توزيع عادل كهرباء في مناطق مثل مخيمات اللاجئين في الأزرق. We bring medical care, especially surgeries, to isolated indigenous people. Pegados no neozole, agora eu posso ver a imensa floresta e minha casa. Entonces ya teniendo un soporte y como un equipo de trabajo, ir y buscar las soluciones para que la mina sea más limpia. We are building an innovation hub powered by solar energy and electrolysis. We develop fertilizers and pesticides using microorganisms naturally present in the soil. Our bone chair water filters will protect the health of the youth of Tanzania. We are going to be the change makers of Fiji, taking climate action and protecting the future of our land. Since the youth of today are the future of tomorrow. The Zayat Sustainability Prize is a celebration of minds and hearts that want to make an impact on the world. It is an opportunity to improve lives and make positive changes within our communities. From, from the schools, schools in Fiji, Fiji, to the lads in France, from the schools of Tanzania, to, to the parts of Brazil. Asante Sana Zayat Sustainability Prize. Gracias Zayat Sustainability Prize. Thank you Zayat Sustainability Prize. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations once again to all of our winners today. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great honor to invite to the stage His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the United Arab Emirates, to award our winners. It is also my pleasure to invite some of our esteemed guests to the stage to join His Highness in awarding our winners. We would like to invite the presidents of Angola, Ghana, Kazakhstan, Mozambique, Palau, the Seychelles, Uganda, and Zambia. I'd also like to invite the prime ministers of Ethiopia and Morocco and Tonga.
After the awarding, we will be inviting some of our other esteemed guests up for a group photo. We'd now like to invite up our first winner for the day in the health category, Asociação Expedicionarios da Saúde. Congratulations. Let's hear it for our winner. Next up, we'd like to invite our winner in the food category, Region Organics. Let's hear it for Region Organics. Now, please join us in welcoming and congratulating our winner in the energy category, Neurotech. Congratulations, Neurotech. Now, please join us in welcoming and congratulating our winner in the water category, Leaders. Congratulations to Leaders. And finally, I would like to invite our winners in the Global High Schools category. From the Americas, Fundacion Bios Terre y Cam Ubate. Congratulations, come on down. Congratulations to Icam Ubate. From Sub-Saharan Africa, UWC East Africa Arusha Campus. Well deserved, UWC East Africa. From the Middle East and North Africa, Gifted Student School. Congratulations, Gifted Student School.
from Europe and Central Asia, Romain Roland Gymnasium. Congratulations. Well deserved to Romain Roland Gymnasium. From South Asia, Dhaka Residential Model College. Congratulations to Dhaka Residential Model College for a well-deserved victory. And from East Asia and the Pacific region, Camille Muslim College. Congratulations to Camille Muslim College. Well deserved. It is now my privilege to invite their excellencies, the presidents of Azerbaijan and Korea, the vice president of the Ivory Coast, and His Excellency Olafur Ragnar Grimson, former president of Iceland and chairman of the Zayed Sustainability Prize jury for a group photo. Please come to the stage. Congratulations once again to all of our winners, and as a kind reminder, please keep your trophy boxes open for the best possible photo. Congratulations! Let's hear it for all of our winners! Please give all of our winners one more huge round of applause for their incredible hard work and commitment to creating a more sustainable world. Thank you to your highnesses, your excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us, and please enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.